Okay, I'm back on the 4440 again. Now, before I put this thing back together completely, um, very important valve lash. Now, valve lash is kind of like one of those overlooked things a lot, I think, from a lot of stuff that I've seen. Now, a lot of newer stuff, newer cars and things like that, you don't even set the valves. You don't worry about it. But for stuff that does, there's usually a maintenance schedule that goes with them. I mean, it could be like a thousand hours or, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it goes by miles. I think with like some Cummins trucks, I think there's like, what is it, like a 5.9 Cummins. Like you don't even adjust the valves until like the first 150,000 miles. But anyway, this isn't a Cummins. This is this is a John Deere 466, and that's what we're doing today. And um, so this being a John Deere 466 block, it's also the first year of the 466 block, 1978. And to me, it's my favorite motor. Like this is like John Deere's most iconic engine in my personal opinion. And I've also got um, instructions for the valve lash. So that's what I'm going to go over with today and uh, set the valve lash. So now first step on setting the valve lash is finding number one TDC compression stroke. And now to do that, we're going to be doing two things. One is we're going to be removing this cap right here. It's a uh, little, just a little hex plug. And take that out and you look down in that hole if you watch my last video that i did on installing an injection pump and injectors i actually got the camera to, or got good light for the camera to actually see that but so there's a tab on the left and there's a tab on the right and if you got those two tabs lined up then you're number one tdc okay so now there's a plug over here and we're gonna actually there's two plugs there's a little one and a big one now the big one that is for the john deere tool that fits in there to turn the motor over it's like a starter gear that you can put a wrench on and just sit here and crank it over it'd be pretty neat but i don't have one i'm just going to turn the motor over in the front so when you get to number one tdc um there's a hole that you can take a 5 16 bolt and pop it in to a tapped out hole that's in the flywheel. It'll just pop in there. You wiggle the motor back and forth. You can feel it pop in there. Um, it doesn't go in very far. I think the hole is probably only maybe a quarter inch deep or so. So once you got that in place and your timing marks over here are lined up, then your number one TDC, good to start setting your valves. Now, <clears throat> what valves you'll be adjusting and I will be putting up this very paper I have right here, like on the screen, so you guys can hopefully see it better. Uh, I'm just pointless for me to show it to you like this. It's just it won't, it won't you won't see it. But I will fix that anyway. So now for the first set of instructions on number one TDC compression stroke. You will do the number one intake exhaust valves and number two intake valve, number three exhaust valve, number four intake valve, number five exhaust valve. And then that, that's it. Okay, so starting at the front of the motor they, they just it's just real simple they call it one two three four five six it's that simple it's just in a row from front to back one to six okay so after you adjust those and i guess another good thing to note i'm getting a little ahead of myself here intake valves get adjusted to eighteen thousands and exhaust valves get adjusted to 28 thousandths. Okay, so if you did all of that on your number one TDC, 
then you can rotate your engine 360 degrees. So you'll take your pin back out of that hole, rotate your motor 360 degrees, and then that pin should line back up. And then you'll be at number six, TDC compression stroke. And then all the valves that I didn't just name off. So it would be um, starting with number two, exhaust, number three, intake, number four, exhaust, number five, intake, number six, intake, and number six, exhaust. So after that, you just take your bolt out there, and put your little cap back in, and put everything back together, um, your valve should be set. I mean, it's one of those things, it's, it's like, I don't know, I think, I want to say, I could be wrong, but I want to say like on these motors here, on the John Deere 466s, I want to say something like every thousand hours you're supposed to adjust the valve lash. And that's something that just for a lot of guys, they don't even think about it, you know, and, and really to take it to a dealership, it's going to cost a lot of money and they don't even like to mess with piddly stuff like that. And really, I mean, you can do it. You can do it. So, um, I guess with that being said, I have some video of me kind of going through this. I don't even know if I'll show it too much or, or not. I might. But, uh, yeah, um, other thing that I can be doing is checking the valve lift. And by checking a valve lift, um, we're just checking, let's see, what was that? Basically, we'd be checking um, cam wear by doing that. So, let's see, how would you do that? Okay, so checking valve lift uh, for cam wear, uh, I, I'm not. I'm not even going to worry about it. I could. I could put a dial indicator right on the side or right on top. And then roll the motor over 360 degrees, and then take that measurement and what I get. And, um, and to intake valves, I should get between uh, 412 thousandths to 442 thousandths. So I have uh, 30 thousandths of tolerance there that I can play with. 
I mean, that'd be a pretty wore out cam. I mean, 30,000 is a lot. And um, this motor's got like, I think, so it's, I'm, I'm guessing probably somewhere around maybe 7,500 hours on it. They, they say to do a full um, rebuild at like 10,000 hours. About 1,000 hours ago, the head was redone and the main bearings were done. I just did the injectors, injection pump, put a new turbo on it, um, just set the valves. The thing should be good. I mean, the compression's awesome in it. So I, I should be good. So, yeah, so if I've got, you know, another $2,2500 before it needs to be overhauled again, and we don't use this thing a whole lot, so that could be that could be a long time from now. That could be like 15 years from now. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so that, uh, that'll conclude today's video. And uh, I hope it was somewhat educational and useful for somebody somewhere. That'd be great. So give me a thumbs up if you like it. Please uh, like and subscribe and tune in Thursday when I'm back at it on this thing. I'm hoping to really get some assembly work done on this thing now. So see you then. Thanks for watching.